Our next guest on this episode is the first vice president of the Hamilton and District Labor Council, Jay Edington. Jay, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. Um, so the reason that uh, I wanted to have you on this episode to talk about some other things as well, which we'll talk about at the end, but last month's episode, we were talking a little bit about different aspects of health care, and we talked about long-term care, and one of the topics that came up, and we didn't really spend enough time on it, was the idea of a lot of short staffing that's happening, probably not just in Hamilton, but around the province right now. Maybe tell us a little bit about yourself in terms of your relationship in a long-term care facility and, and why you might bring a level of expertise to this that maybe a general person might not understand. Well, thanks. Um, certainly, I'm a long-term care nurse. Uh, I've been a long-term care nurse for well over 25 years. I've uh, gone through the pandemic, just like many of our other healthcare sectors have. And uh, uh, one of the greatest things that has happened because of COVID was that it exposed the problems that was always there in long-term care um, in, in this industry. And um, of course, the biggest issue uh, many long-term carers are facing is staffing issues and the lack of staffing issues. And um, so that's continuing to be battled on a, day, on a d daily basis. Now, when we're talking about long-term care facilities, we're talking about the bulk of the workers probably make our PSWs. The bulk are PSWs, PSWs, yes. RPNs, some RNs, then yeah. you have people who would be... Dietary. Dietary, yeah. recreation, that yes. kind of stuff. Yes. Um, Doug Ford keeps announcing, you know, we're opening up this many spaces for, you know, PSWs to get trained, and we're going to make it way easier for them to get trained. Is that working right now? Is it helping at all? I'm just surprised that uh, Doug Ford is uh, opening up so many long-term care facilities and, ex and expanding on long-term care, uh, existing long-term care beds when there's no staff. Right. So, you know, people are leaving the industry, are leaving the sector. So, so I making announcements for beds, for and, beds not having staff. and not having staff to staff the, you know, to staff it. And so, who are these? Who are these? Uh, these residents who are going to be taking care of them if there's no staffing? And when we're Sorry. talking about short staffing, obviously there had to be concessions that were made during the pandemic. You know, people are going to get sick. Mm -hmm. uh, there's going to have to be some emergency situations. Yep. Uh, so they put rules in place for that. But are you noticing that it's coming back to normal after the pandemic at all? Or is it there? Are they still staying kind of on this emergency basis? Well, what we saw during pandemic, because so many staff got sick, yeah. um, that they would be bringing in, you know, all of a sudden you saw all these agencies, healthcare agencies that popped up. Um, across the across the province, and these agency, what was lucrative for uh, staffing um, or for like nurses or PSWs was that they were paying, you know, the facilities, the fi whether it's hospitals or private facilities, uh, were paying, you know, two three times more than what that if it was a worker that was working in that in that uh, as a regular worker. So people were leaving, leaving their workplaces, their actual jobs, going to agencies so they can ma they can make a ton of more money. And so, but they, that's, that was the emergency plan was, you know, they had to fill staff. They had to fill staff um, in, in long-term care. So we're seeing less and less agency, um, but it's still very much there. But we're seeing e even with the lack, because it's so much money to pay, um, you know, it's in the millions and billions of dollars that, it, you know, agencies are, are getting paid. Um, so now, because, you know, the money's kind of run out, you know, so now it's just short staffed. So what they oftentimes you'll see in, or that I hear from um, other colleagues in other facilities is that, you know, you'll have your, your roster, uh, your work roster, and it's filled with all these names, but they're actually not filled. Right. So, and what we're also seeing a lot more too is because of the lack of, uh, the shortage of staff, um, you're, you're getting a lot more call-ins. Right. So people who are burnt out, you know, the, the oftentimes you'll hear from, I've heard from uh, different uh, colleagues, uh, di different facilities, you know, the employer is, is blaming, is blaming the, the staff for not showing up. Well, there's a reason why staff aren't, are calling in sick. They are completely mentally burnt out. They're physically burnt out. And uh, so that becomes, uh, that becomes, again, another challenge. So. so let me just get back to this one thing, just so people understand. Like during the pandemic, we had this pattern of, if I was working as a full-time PSW for a long-term mm -hmm. care facility, I might be making $19, $20 an hour, yeah. something like that. If I decided to go to an agency, mm -hmm. now if I get picked up for a shift and there's a demand all over the place for shifts, sure. I could be making up to $40 an hour mm -hmm. and homes are paying that yeah. instead of worrying about retaining their own workers. Correct. And so if, and, that, and that's really what it comes down to, if you, if, if you pay your worker a good wage, and that's the way to retain 
They're, you know, that's the way to retain them and they will stay in the workplace. Staff, staff these long-term care uh, homes don't have your staff get burnt out don't have they won't get mentally burnt out physically burnt out pay them well and you'll and they'll stay and you'll retain them and you'll have a full t full and, shift every and single time you will time. have a full shift every single time i know it sounds easier yeah. uh, easier than done but i mean this is uh you know where unions come in and and uh you know continuing to push to, uh, the forward government um so so i guess my question next would be this. If I'm somebody who's got a relative, mother, father, whatever, in a long-term care facility, mm -hmm. all of the short staffing, all of these casual employees who come in on a day-by-day -day basis, how does that impact the care that's happening in the facility? Oh, it completely impacts the care. I mean, that means that that resident is not receiving, they may not be getting their showers. Mm -hmm. They may not be getting their baths. You know, it's going to take, it will take, you know, much longer to time to get to, to for the PSW to change their brief or to toilet them or to get them fed, you know, so it does, it will take, it, it, th then you start to have, you know, skin breakdowns and you start to have, you know, more falls, you know, because people are agitated, you know, so it uh, completely impacts the, you know, that family member and how, and that resident um, in their day-to-day -day care. And when workers are working doubles and sometimes triples because nobody comes into the facility, um, well, they're not allowed to work triples. They're not they're like, technically, they're not allowed no, to, no, but I, I've yeah. heard of under the table sometimes yeah. they were happening. Mm -hmm. um, that's got to be dangerous as well. People oh, are just overtired. Overtired, yep. Yeah. Overtired, overburdened. Yeah. Yep. Um, let's switch gears a little bit. One okay. of the roles that you do with the Hamilton Labor Council is you help to organize, especially the community side of our Labor Day uh, parade and picnic. Uh, that's coming up on Labor Day. I know it's a couple months away, but people are going to probably be watching this episode throughout the summer. Um, with regards to community and the community outreach, um, what are some of the things that you are looking to do this year? Uh, some of the stuff we've done over the last couple of years as well. Yeah, the last couple of years, I mean, we kind of really took a, um, a great turn where we wanted the community, like whether it's like, uh, organ like any kind of community organization um, who, you know, enjoy, we want them to come out and enjoy uh, Labor Day, have them learn what Labor Day is. But we have uh, organizations that will come out and do tabling, you know, showcase, showcase your, organiz your organization. And so, um, and it's free and you know we provide tables and uh you know there's so many great community groups out there and if any uh, if if there's any groups out there that want to come out and want to table with the uh, with on labor day uh feel free to get in touch and also i mean we try and encourage this as a community event as well yep. we make it friendly for kids yep. uh you know we've we have a barbecue barbecue there yep. live music there yes. Yes. Uh, so people shouldn't just think of Labor Day as the parade. We're down yes. at Bayfront Park afterwards. Yes. And um, we've seen an increase in the amount of kids coming over the last oh, few years. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. So there's always going to be something to do. Jay, thanks so much for coming on the episode. Thank you so much. We'll be right back after this.